in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Filippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jfilippone at cf-lawfirm.com. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Hi, I'm Rob Guswaller. As the branch manager of our Persephone location for North Point Bank, I can tell you emphatically that our customers continue to sing our praises. Our community values us as much as we at North Point value our team. Our goal is to always exceed our clients' expectations. If you're just zipping through life and need a helping hand with any of your home buying decisions, please give us a call today. Have you ever needed a day to relax during these stressful times? Well, then look no further than Modern Acupuncture. Modern Acupuncture will ensure your time there will not only be relaxing, but make you feel rejuvenated. Not only will your stay be comfortable, but safe as well. All staff at Modern Acupuncture practice safe social distancing guidelines and keep all equipment and room sanitized after each visit. Modern Acupuncture, making lives better. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right, because CCMs are the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. Chairman's Elite Club Loan Officer Mitch Vandalunda of Loan Depot is your go-to person for home loans, whether it's a new home mortgage or refinance of your current home, and she specializes in renovations for those who want to add on and fix up. Because of her extensive knowledge of loan programs, problem-solving skills, and steadfast commitment to customer service, Midge ensures that each borrower receives superior guidance as they pursue one of the most personal investments of their lifetime. Reach out to her today at 973-202-0992 or mvandalunda at loandepot.com. Love it when more Sussex Sports broadcast your game. Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports' award-winning service that it's brings you play-by-play -play commentary, right live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real-time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973-713-5944.
We reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! All right, let's do it. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Roxbury High School in Succasano, New Jersey, as we present live coverage of NJAC High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. Tonight, we have a great matchup in the NJAC American Division as the 10-4 Roxbury Gales host the 16-7 Montville Mustangs. Hello, everybody. I'm Nick Federico, joined by Mr. Gale himself, Mr. Rowdy Ryan Roddy. Good to be on the air with you again, my friend. And it's senior night tonight here at Roxbury, but before we get started, let's take some time to thank our sponsor for tonight's game, and that is County Concrete. They would like to say they are a proud sponsor of Roxbury Youth Sports and everything going on here in Roxbury. And this game is sponsored by the Roxbury High School Parents Club, so thank, thanks to them for sponsoring this game, and you guys are responsible for getting us on the air, Booster Clubs, and we thank Roxbury every time we come out here. So, Roddy, you got some... You got some uh, you got some stakes in this one, buddy. Yeah, I do. I mean, this Roxbury team, I know a lot of these guys playing out there. I grew up playing rec ball with them, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to see how they perform today against a very tough Montville team. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. We'll start with those visiting Montville Mustangs coming in with a 6-7 and seven overall record under first-year head coach Jason DeVirigio, De excuse me, winning a close one against High Point last night with Ryan Neeskins on the mound where he only gave up one hit and struck out five against High Point last night. The Mustangs have completely turned their fortunes around from last year because they only won seven games in 2021, and they are hungry for 20 wins to finish the season. But they have to go through these Roxbury Gales to get to get there, does Montville, does this Montville squad. They do have some good pieces, Roddy. They do. They can really hit. They got some, they got some really good quality pitching, and, and Coach Jason said that they really do do a good job priding themselves on defense as well. Yeah, uh, Ian Kaiser on the mound today. He's a great hitter, you know. He mm -hmm. makes a lot of contact. He's a great guy to have in the lineup for the Mustangs. Kaiser also a very good pitcher. Uh, he gets the nod today, spotting a .8 ERA. A sub-1 ERA, anytime you can get that is awesome. 61 Ks and 35 innings pitch. So, Roddy, for your Roxbury Gales, coming in with a record of 10-14 and 14 under head coach Greg Trotter, they did have an impressive 4-3 win in round one of the Morris County tournament against Morristown, but... You know, they kind of went down this six-game skid here a little bit, but then they beat Riverdale in, over this over this weekend. Like Montville, the Gales do have some good bats and, you know, good plate discipline, and they have great arms to round out this pitching staff. Yeah, I was actually here for that uh, Morristown game. That went into the ninth inning, and a walk-off was hit by freshman Joey Ronchetta. He hit one right down that right field line, scored a run. I'm excited to see how this game's going to play out today, Feds. Me too, buddy. Me too. It's good to have you back on the air. It's been a while since last time we called the game. It was actually a Montville football game last time yeah. we called it. That was yeah. a good one. That was a good one. Went to overtime against Mendham. So we're looking for a good one here today on Roddy's home soil here in Roxbury. But uh, Roxbury has won three of the last five. But the two times that these two teams have played this season, the Mustangs have gotten the better of Roxbury, including that 4-3 win in the quarterfinal round of the Morris County Tournament. So it should be a good one here from Succasana, New Jersey, just off Route 10 here. So Roddy, thinking about you know thinking about these two squads, you got a freshman on the mound today for Roxbury. What do you expect from your Gales today? All right. So what I'm hearing is freshman Dawson Gerard. He's mm -hmm. going to be an opener for Roxbury. He's only going to pitch about one inning. Make sure he can get out of that first inning. And it's senior night. We are going to see some senior pitchers throwing today. Should be very interesting here. We'll give you the starting lineup for the visiting Montville Mustangs. The leading off and playing shortstop will be number three. Ryan Whirl, then batting second pitching today is Ian Kaiser. He will oppose Gerard today on the mound. Batting third and playing left field is Logan Force. Batting cleanup and catching is Brian Lovagino. Batting fifth and playing center field is Hunter Force. Batting sixth was the winning pitcher last night for Montville. He plays first base today. That's Ryan uh, Niskins. And DHing and the number 10 of David Beto will bat seventh. 
Chris Zerolo playing second base, number 25, will bat eighth. And ending the lineup will be Jason Vogt, number seven, playing right field for Montville today under a first-year head coach. Again, turning their season, you know, have really had a successful season, 16 wins thus far for the Mustangs after winning seven games last year. They're looking at a pretty high seed within the Morris County, uh, the state playoffs, excuse me, as uh, these two teams have met in the regular season once before and in the Morris County tournament, like I mentioned. So this one should be interesting. Yeah. You bring up the first-year head coach in Montville, the opposite over in mm -hmm. Roxbury, Greg Trotter. He's been coaching here for over 20 years, and that record that Roxbury has yielded is surprising, mm -hmm. knowing his legacy here. All right, so like I said, leading off for the Montville Mustangs will be Ryan Whirl, the shortstop, hitting 328 with nine RBIs, the leadoff hitter for the Montville Mustangs. And of course, like we said, the freshman, Dawson Garrard, two innings pitch, 3.5 ERA and three strikeouts, just a freshman on the hill tonight here as Roxbury's senior day. Going to celebrate a couple seniors. Roddy will tell you some fun stuff about those seniors throughout the game, I'm sure. As we're getting ready for baseball here from Succasana, we're underway. First pitch is in there for strike one. Gerard on the mound. He's a freshman, and he was actually injured a little bit during the season. I'm told this is going to be about his third time getting a nod. Varsity ball. 0-1 from Gerard. Foul tick. That'll be for strike two. You know, he can bring that velocity, but we got to watch his command today, mm -hmm. how he's spotting his pitches in this first inning. It's interesting to see. You know, you did mention he's only going to pitch about an inning. He's going to be in an, be in an opener position mm -hmm. for Roxbury today, so we're going to see the point of attack as he's up 0-2. Someone ready warming up in the pen. Payoff pitch. Grounded and easy play back to the pitcher for out number one. Good quick first out. And that brings up the number two hitter, the pitcher today for Montville, the number six of Ian Kaiser. This year he is batting 409, 15 RBIs. He has gone deep twice, Roddy, so that's something to watch out for so far. And Roxbury's got the shift on for him. Forward at second, playing a little back there. Third baseman. Makes sense here. So one out, nobody on for Montville as Kaiser comes up to the plate. Pitch is low, 4-0. So, Roddy, tell us who's warming up in the pen there for Roxbury. That is the senior, Elliot Trujillo. And Elliot will be attending East Stroudsburg University. Oh, look you at that. You know about that one, look huh? Look at that. Great choice of school as that pitch is grounded foul. We'll count on strike one. Making contact, Kaiser is. You just got to straighten that one out. Like I said, Kaiser this year, 409, 15 ribbies and two home runs. Definitely a threat as he's a lefty going up against the righty. Dawson Garrard. 1-1. One, one. Is outside. Just from our vantage point, is outside. So that's 2-1. Elliot Trujillo warming up in the bullpen, as Roddy said. Garrard going to be an opener as he delivers. Good take there by Kaiser, and it's 3-1. 2-2, two, two, excuse me, because Roddy's keeping me honest. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Appreciate no you. No problem. <laughs> 2-2 two, two from Gerard. That one is popped up. Trying to make the play there at third. He will gonna go into the crowd, but he will get there. That one was way up there. That's what we call a home run in an elevator shaft. Nice play there by Robbie Newmeyer, the third baseman for Roxbury, and two away. For Logan Force, number 12, the left fielder. Newmeyer will be tending Lafayette College, one of the seniors here for Roxbury. He will be majoring in mechanical engineering. Very impressive. That's a hard major. Yeah, we couldn't do that. We're doing sports no, broadcasting. That's why over we here. that's why we sit here. Yeah. That's why we, we sit in just sit here and talk about sports. That's it's right. A lot easier. So here's Logan Force, the three hitter. Is that one's upstairs for ball one? You know, uh, Gerard can really pick and choose here. He doesn't mm -hmm. really have to worry about that pitch count. Only pitching an inning. So Logan Force hitting 288, 14 ribbies, has gone deep once. 1-0. Way upstairs and inside. It's going to be 2-0. Back right. Force off the plate there. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, Gerard's only pitching an inning, but he's got to keep that 
Got to keep that momentum. Got to want that one through three inning for that offense to come up for the Roxbury Gales. 2-0 from Gerard. That one is in there for strike one. Behind the plate today for the Gales is the catcher, Mike Pia. He's got some power when it comes to hitting. Let's see what we got on Pia. Four homers this year on five RBIs. Does most of his work by the long ball. Pitch swung on and missed. Strike two, two and two. This would be a huge first inning for the Roxbury Gales. Wouldn't be surprised if I see a heater high here. We'll see if he can call it. Two, two to force. That one's inside, three and two, full count. Again, I want to thank everybody at Roxbury for having us. As here on senior day, senior day, senior day, senior night. It's four o'clock, right? Senior evening, something like that. Senior midday, <laughs> mid evening. Payoff pitch is laced out to right. Chasing it down, but it will not get down. That'll be a Is that foul? Yeah, that was okay. foul. Okay. A little hard to Couldn't see with see the it. crowd over here, you know. That's one's foul, so we're gonna do it again. Force got a lot of that one, but just goes foul. So Dawson Gerard, not a lot of action this year. A 3-5 ERA nonetheless in two innings pitch, but he's done a good job so far. The pitch in there for strike three and a 1-2-3 inning for the Roxbury Gales. They will come up to bat. No hits, no runs on that one, and the Gales will come up to bat here in the bottom of the first. You're watching a New Jersey High School Baseball here on Morris Essex Sports. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's gonna help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis, and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. Welcome back to Roxbury High School here in Succasano, New Jersey. Through a half inning. Good job there by Gerard on the mound, but now they're opposed by Ian Kaiser. Roddy, why don't you give us the Roxbury lineup? Batting first for the Gales, playing center field, number two, Colin Richter. Batting second, playing left field, number 21, Matt Capco. Batting third, playing second base, number eight, Justin Ford. Batting fourth, number four, the shortstop, Nick Morales. And it looks like Kaiser's getting ready to throw that first pitch. So. I'll let you finish, though. All right, you'll let me finish? He's such a nice guy. Delivery Behind from. the plate, like we said, number 19, Mike Pia. Playing right field, batting sixth, number one, Matt Rette. Batting seventh, playing first base, number 13, Joey Ronchetta. Batting eighth, the DH, number 20, Orlando Angulo. And batting ninth, playing third base, number 12, Robbie Newmeyer. That was Bob Shepard ask Roddy, I gotta tell you. Good job there. Thank you. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Early 1-1 one, one count for Ian Kaiser on the mound for the Mustangs as he delivers the 1-1. One, one. In there to Richter, that's in there for strike two. Richter on the year, 
406 with 11 RBIs for the Roxbury Gales. And Kaiser on the mound. 35 innings, a sub-1 ERA at .80 and 61 Ks. It's going to be a tough task for the Gales today as that one's low for 2-2. Two and two. And if the Gales want to be successful, it all starts with the leadoff man here, number two, mm -hmm. Conrick there. He needs to get on base by any means. He's got some serious speed. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss. That'll be the first strikeout of the day for Kaiser, one away for Roxbury. That brings up the two-hitter, Matt Capco. I haven't seen much of Capco this year to the games I've been to, so I'm interested to see how he plays today. Capco only two for four, so that's 500, so that counts, right? But yeah, yeah. Very limited action for him. No RBIs yet for him, but an opportunity to get on base for the Gales. Kaiser, low for ball one. Of course, we want to thank everybody here at Roxbury for having us, all the parents, the booster clubs for having us. This isn't possible without you. And, of course, County Concrete, we like to say that they're a proud sponsor of Roxbury's youth as that one's in there for strike one. This game is sponsored, of course, by the Roxbury High School Parents Club. So we thank everybody here at Roxbury once again. Pitch is low. Two and one to Capco. I think that's what Roxbury has to do here. Make Kaiser work. Make him throw these pitches. If you get that pitch count up there, it'll be effective. So just be patient at the plate and look for your pitch. As he does a good job there. As he grounds to short, it'll be a tough play at first, but it's in time for out number one. Great hustle down the line. Now. Yeah, two outs. So two outs for the second baseman, Justin Ford, the number eight on your program, if you have one. Hitting 636, Roddy, 13 RBI. It's pretty impressive, huh? Yeah, three homers as well. Justin Ford, an opportunity for the Gales here with two away. Trying to avoid a one, two, three inning as that one is back behind the plate foul. Watch out for the cars back there or watch out for the school. Yeah, that's our cafeteria back there. Ooh. So, Roddy, I saw on your Instagram today, uh, it's the one-year anniversary today of Roxbury Food Reviews. It is. Wow. Yeah. A year ago, uh, we got a really bad cheeseburger over in that cafeteria. <laughs> Yo, one oh. is lying, and that'll be a base hit for Roxbury. So, Ford will get on with a single, two-out single there for him. No, Ford getting the start here at second. I haven't seen him play much second. He's usually over at short or third with that great of arm of his. He also pitches a lot, too. And that brings up the cleanup hitter, the shortstop, Nick Morales. Morales hitting 579 with five RBIs. So the first hit of the ball game for either side goes to the Roxbury Gales. Pitch from Kaiser, big swing and a miss there by Morales on one. Morales will be attending Ramapo. Oh. And his favorite sports team, which I gave him a lot of stuff for growing up, he's a Toronto Blue Jays really fan. Interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting choice. Well, at least he's not a bandwagon fan. I'll give him that. Yeah. That pitch is in there for strike two, 0 oh 2 to Nick Morales. I'd hold up on that bandwagon because his favorite athlete is Mike Trout. But come on. Oh, I Jer mean, Jersey, Jersey kid, baseball who player. Who doesn't like Mike Trout? I know. Guys are going to take his time here with an 0-2 count against Morales. Runner on first is Justin Ford. He singled. Delivery in there for strike three. So another strikeout there to end the inning for Kaiser. No hits on no run. Uh, uh, one hit, excuse me, on no runs there for Roxbury. But they get the first hit of the ball game. As we head it to the top of the second inning, you're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sports. Sports. Nothing, nothing game. We'll be right back. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankford, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down 
if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast, it's worth the wait. At Madison Tire and Auto Repair LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. We offer a variety of products and automotive services to enhance your vehicle's performance. Our mission is simple. We never promise more than we can deliver, and we always give the customer more than they expect. Because at Madison Tire and Auto Repair LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. Please call us for a quote or service question at 973-377-1915. And like we expected here in the top of the second, new pitcher on for Roxbury. Roddy, tell me about Elliot Trujillo. Well, we already learned that he will be attending your alma mater, East Strasburg University. It's a great school. Good baseball, great baseball school. And what he would be majoring is sports management. Oh, another great. Yeah, that's a great choice. Good baseball program at ESU, great sports management program. That's the right school there, Elliot. I'll give that to you, man. Good job there. And Elliot, a great teammate, when he was asked what will he most m miss most about Roxbury High School, he said, playing baseball with these guys and the awesome coaching staff we have here. Great pride in this school. Very good to hear. We love that. So Trujillo relieves Dawson Garrard, who only pitched an inning but had one strikeout in the first inning. So Trujillo will take over, and he will face 4-5-6, the meat of the order. It'll be... Brian Lovagino, Lo Lo Hunter Force, and Ryan Neeskins for the Montville Mustang. So leading off for Montville is Brian Lovagillo. He is hitting 404 with 12 RBIs and one home run this year. His first pitch is low, ball one. And Elliot, one of the, I believe, four seniors we have five. today. Five seniors yep. here for Roxbury today. Going to go to ESU. Great solid choice there as the pitch is up for ball two. On Lovagillo. Gio has to get set in, you know, really find that zone. Mm -hmm. Again, he's gone deep a couple of times. It's only he's gone, gone deep once, but 12 RBIs. Pitch is swung on and missed. It'll be two and one. Great comeback pitch there mm -hmm. on 2-0. And Trujillo hasn't pitched a lot this year, but getting a chance here on senior day. Two one from Trujillo. That one's laced to left. That one's going way back. It'll Bounce and go off the wall. Good play in center, and it looks like Lovagilla will head into second slide in, so it'll be a leadoff double for Brian Lovagilla. Yeah, the center fielder, Colin Richter, got there quick. That could have been a triple if he didn't get there. Just took a one hopper and then off the wall as a courtesy runner will come in, I believe, trying to get a number on that. Can't see it because Montville doesn't. Well, they, maybe they do have numbers on the front of their jerseys. But nonetheless, it's the number 21 of Hunter Force, the center fielder. Lovagilo, the catcher. That's why they're setting out the courtesy oh. runner out there. So Trujillo will go up against Hunter Force. 316, eight RBIs has gone deep twice this year. So this, meet, this meet of the lineup of Montville is pretty scary. Pitches up for ball one. Hunter and his brother Logan, two brothers here playing for Montville, both in the starting lineup today. The 1-0 is in the dirt, ball two. And Logan went down via the punch out. Mm -hmm. So let's see if Hunter can change that narrative here. Hunter Force also playing center field today for Montville. So a leadoff for the leadoff double for the Mustangs puts a runner in scoring position here in the second. If anybody can drive him in, it can be Hunter Force. Being the five hitter in this lineup. Pitch is just outside, it'll be three and zero. Oh. Falling behind is Trujillo. He's a force to be reckoned with. Uh -huh. You like that one? Good yeah, one. Yeah. 
Those are things I miss. I miss the puns. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them a little stupid, but it's all right. No, nah, no, nah, I like them. I'm a fan. Three out of fours. That one's in there. Good pitch there from Trujillo. It's three and one. I can hear it through my headset a little bit. A little chirping going on yeah. there. Well, we did Del Barton and uh, Randolph for the Morris County Championship game. I mean, you know Del Barton fans. Yeah. They, they get loud. They're into it. Loud and proud. That's right. 3-1 to force. That one's laced to left center. Going back is the left fielder. He makes the catch. Tagging back up is Lovagillo. So first out of the inning for Montville, and that brings up Ryan Neeskins. See what Neeskins can do here with one out. A runner on second. He was going to steal for third, but Capco caught it out there. And he went back to second. So Neeskins pitched last night in the win against High Point for Montville. So he's playing first base today. Struck out five, only let up a hit in seven innings. And he's not too bad at the dish either. Roddy hitting 200, five RBIs. It's all about those ribbies. Checking on that runner at second is Trujillo. These skins adjusting the batting gloves here. Mm -hmm. Could step out for a second. Lovagillo also six stolen bases this year, so he could be a threat, but it's a short throw at third, so could test the waters maybe. I'm going to check back again. I guess Roxbury did really... Did really do their homework there with the runner on second, Lovagillo with six stolen base, stolen bags this year. Just got to keep the runner honest. Pitch to Nishkins is low, ball one in the dirt. That's the thing about baseball. These dugouts aren't too far apart, no. so opposing sides can... <laughs> Talk to each other all bit. the time. Football, it's a little different. There's a yeah. whole, whole playing field in between them. A little overcast kind of day here, at Roxbury. No, uh, no sun real coming out. I guess I like that because I don't get to, I don't have to burn. Not too hot, not too cold. That's right. The one zero is fouled. That one took a weird bounce behind us. It'll be one and one. Maybe we should start getting some weather reports here on Morris <laughs> Sussex think? Sports. It's uh, 62 <laughs> degrees with a chance of rain. Oh, don't say chance of rain. Oh, no. Produ oh. Producer Paul will freak out. Anybody got a wood around here I can knock <laughs> Paul's ready. Paul's got the ponchos. He's got the. He's got everything. Paul is always prepared. The great Paul are redoing the producing today. I got to shout him out because his, his, his face gets red when I shout him out. As he's looking back to second. Keeping that runner honest. Good job by him. Paul, one of the behind-the-scenes people on the wrap-up report that feds, we haven't been on in a while. No, we haven't. I'm we have it. not. A lot of a lot of stuff going on for Morris Sussex, so we're, we've yeah. been unable to produce it in a while. A lot of Thursday games. seems that Thursday is one of our busiest days of the week. 1-1, one, one, runner goes. Ball was in the dirt, and Lovagillo will go to third. So make that seven stolen bases for him. So it looks like Trujillo is using some off speed here. Mm -hmm. A couple balls in the dirt this inning. So a 2 1 count on Neeskins. 205 RBIs playing first base against, the, again, the winning pitcher last night for Montville as they played high point last night. I believe they won 2 0. My memory could be off, though, to be wrong. Trujillo's being a little patient here. He's, he knows he's behind in the count, only by a pitch, so. But he's got to take his time. And Lou Vigillo being a pest over there at third base is the delivery. Popped up. Ford calls for it. And a good job there by Ford, the second baseman. Two away. Well, that at bat was a battle. Mm -hmm, definitely Lasted was. A bit. And that'll bring up number 10, David Bietto. The designated hitter today. 
Now with two outs, Trujillo just has to focus mm -hmm. on the batter. He cannot worry about that runner over there at third. Of course, David Bedio doing the designated hitting today. Number two, Matt Colatrella playing third for Montville. So after letting off that leadoff, leadoff double and then later stealing third, Trujillo doing a decent job here as he's got the last two batters out. Because that one's low, 1-0 one oh to Bedio. 1-0 oh to Bedio. I have to enter. I entertain myself. I mean, it's a, it's a good game, but I have to yeah. entertain myself. In you got to make yourself Paul. laugh, you know. Paul just always looks at me when I say something that he's like, "That one's high ball too." He always gives me this look. He's like, just like in disappointment. I don't know why. <laughs> Paul so criticizing good. us yeah, over he, here. No, he's ne never no, critical. Never no. critical. We got to keep him entertained too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> We're all in this together, huh? That's right. Two zero. Big swing and a miss, two and one. A big old hack at that one. Yeah, he's trying to hit one into uh, the middle school over there. Watch out, kids. And nobody warming up in the Gales bullpen, so I'm gonna guess Trujillo is gonna go at least one more. Delivers the two one. Big another big hack there from Betio. It's two two. Good job battling back in the count by Trujillo. When it is parting time for Trujillo, I expect uh, another senior, Nick Rizzo, to come in here and mm. pitch. He's a PO, which I told Paul earlier means pitcher only. So you learn something new every day. Yeah. Isn't that right, Paul? 2-2. <laughs> two, two. In there for strike three. So good job bouncing back by Trujillo as he lets off the leadoff double, but he retires the next three. So no runs on one hit for the Montville Mustangs as we head to the bottom of the second. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports from Roxbury High School. Be right back. Starting us off at number five, here is Mendham's Liam Lloyd with the snipe past Morristown goalie Dylan Peck for his 10th goal of the year. Daniel Leonard with great defense to steal the puck back, moving behind a goal to pass it back into the middle to Ryan Leonard with a first time shot to make it 3-1 for Bernard's first whipping. Coming in at number three is Par Regional's Dylan Zelinskis on a great individual effort, creating a breakaway opportunity for the goal as Par Regional breaks through for their first win of the season. First town with the pressure on all of the Mendham players to give Harry Stetton an incredible breakaway to fake out the goalie, letting them know who the boss is to score the fourth goal for Morristown. Finally at number one, it's Pope John star Alana Robinson with the crossover against Sparta's Bryn McCurry and finishes with a smooth jumper. Let's take a look at that again, but in slow motion. The wrap-up report's top five plays of the week are brought to you by Planet Networks provides... Bottom of the second inning here, Roxbury back up to bat, leading off is the number 19 of Mike Pia, the catcher. Look, you tell me about Pia there, Roddy. Well, I tell you earlier, he can turn one around four homers on this season. Very impressive. High batting average, I believe 462, five RBIs on those four homers. I mean, kind of platoons behind the plate back there with uh, Johannes and a uh, freshman that's not playing today. That one's up there for strike two, one and one on Pia. Ian Kaiser retired. Only gave up a base hit to Justin Ford with two outs. But then retired Nick Morales on the strikeout. And that big swing and a miss there by Pia. One and two. So, Roddy, when was the. Have you been doing Roxbury Food Reviews? Oh, uh, we haven't actually in no. a while because uh, we actually had a meeting. We actually had Sorry, a meeting. All right, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll talk. Strikeout there by Kaiser. Pia goes down swinging. And that brings up Mike Rattay, number one. Matt Rattay. Sorry to correct you there, buddy. Oh, I wrote Mike. I am so sorry. Thank you, Roddy. This is why this is why we love you. Yeah. But yeah, we had a meeting with uh some higher ups over Machios who supply Roxbury's food and some uh our principal <laughs> a bunch it was crazy for me, you know? Yeah. And a uh, Instagram account started as a joke and then boom, you're sitting in a conference room trying all these foods and Lunch got Why? better, so there's nothing really to really criticize. Look at you know? Roddy, making a difference. Yeah. Good for you, man. 
And if you are from Roxbury, you better vote me for general <laughs> student council president at the end of this year. You got my vote, bud. Thank you. Making the school a better place, as always. <laughs> Matt, Matt Rattay down 0-2 as he three pitches and goes for the second out. So two straight strikeouts there for Kaiser as that brings up Joey Ronchetta. Kaiser in a little groove here. Let's see mm -hmm. if he can retire the side in order. So they vote for that at the end of the year? That's interesting to me. Yeah. Huh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's that for next time. I'm, I'm a junior. I'm a junior. That one from Kaiser's low. Ball one on Ronchetta. You guys got one more year with me before I go off to college, so you better I, make the have most you, of have, it. Have we made a commitment yet? No, but I'm no? thinking. I'm thinking. Yeah, all right. 1-0 from Kaiser. Low ball two. Roddy, any of these any of these guys from Roxbury on the wrestling team? Let me look through this lineup. That no, one, actually. That wow. In there from Kaiser Strike One. They are not. No, no wrestlers. Just a couple of basketball players oh, out there here. There you go. Yeah. Football players as well. Two one from Kaiser. That one's hit foul. Watch out, school. Takes a bounce. On the Goes roof. Goes on the roof. Wow. wow. I'll get that one later. Don't even worry. <laughs> That makes it 2-2 on Joey Ronchetta. You going to go up on the roof there? Yeah, my, I don't free, know, I don't my, think. No, my free period tomorrow. Oh, okay. I'll do a little venturing around. 2-2, two, two, another foul back behind us. Let's see if that hits the, ce uh, the ceiling, the the roof. It does not. What do you? Let's place your bets here. Do you think a foul ball hits one of those grills first or a window? I'm going to go with a grill because it's taking a couple bounces. Yeah. 2-2 two, two in there for a ball. Be full count, 3-2 and two to Joey Ronchetta. I like that last name. Big fan. Yeah, I call him Chetta. Chetta. That makes sense. Like Chetta Cheese. Payoff pitch from Kaiser. Swing and a miss. As Ronchetta goes down on strikes. Oh, no, he's still in there. Still got one more to work he's with. Still got one more. I was ahead of myself, sorry. So now the count is full, 3-2. Tipped into the catcher's glove, I guess, right? Yeah. Kaiser shaking off a couple times there at the mound. He's going to step off and reset a little bit as Ron Chad will step out of the box. Of course, I want to thank everybody at Roxbury for having us, the high school parents club, the booster club, all everybody here at Roxbury High School for having us, 3-2. Oh, you're welcome. Outside for ball four, so Joey Ronchetta works a walk, and he'll head first. And that brings up number 20, Orlando Angulo, the designated hitter. Orlando will be attending Rutgers. Oh, very nice. Majoring in biology and pre-med. Pre-med, wow. Good luck. Good luck, Orlando. His first pitch swung on and missed strike one. His dream job is a medical doctor. Really? Yeah. Wow. All the credit in the world. I could never. Oh, one. Low ball one. One one. Yeah, I kind of faked that medical doctor. If you ever seen the credits <laughs> on the wrap up report. I do remember. Yeah. I think I think you're safe. I don't think you. I don't think. Uh, I don't think anybody thinks I'm actually a doctor. <laughs> one one. Not. Checks his swing, but he did go around. It'll be a one and two to Orlando Angulo. One, two from Kaiser. In there for strike three looking as that ends the inning. So no hits, no runs again for Roxbury as we head to the top of the third inning here from Sakasani at Roxbury High School. We'll be right back. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. Fiber internet, telecommunications, and managed technology services. Keeping essential information, technology systems, and connections updated, safe, and secure 24-7 requires specialized expertise and support. Planet Networks delivers as a trusted partner, enabling you to accomplish your personal and professional goals. For more information, visit planet.net or stop in and visit the local Newton or Denville offices and tell them Morris Sussex Sports sent you. 
If you want to catch even more highlights from more Sussex Sports broadcasts, tune into the Wrap Up Report as we feature top plays and athletes, as well as upcoming previews of the teams you want to watch out for that weekend. You can check us out on Thursdays at 6 p.m. right here on Morris Sussex Sports. Whether you are a trucker or a landscaper, accountant or carpenter, needing workers' compensation, general liability, or commercial auto insurance, Gladstone Coverage Group has you covered. Gladstone Coverage Group is a one-stop agency specializing in many types of insurance, including life, personal, business, and Medicare supplement insurance, as well as employee benefits, serving many communities throughout New Jersey. As an insurance partner protecting you and future generations, contact Tyler Brinson at 908-698-0477 or by email at tylerb at gladstonecoverage.com. And tell him Morris Sussex Sports. It'll be 8-9-1 for Montville as we begin the top of the third. And, of course, the top of the third inning is brought to you by the Roxbury High School Parents Club. Thanks, everybody here at Roxbury for having us. Booster Club, everybody here. And, of course, Counting Concrete would like to say they're a proud sponsor of Roxbury's youth. So top of the third here, leading off is the number 25 of Chris Zurolo, the second baseman today. He is hitting 146, five RBIs for him as Trujillo's first pitch is outside, ball one. And we talked about Angulo's dream job. Trujillo's dream job is owning his own sports team, so big wow. aspirations out of wow. the Roxbury Southpaw. We have the next Gary Vaynerchuk on our hands. Yeah. As the 1 0 is in there for strike one. As a Jets fan, do you, do you like kind of like hope he buys the oh, team yes. one day? Oh, yes. 100%. 100%. I love everything that he does anyway, Gary Vaynerchuk. But yes, one day I do hope that he does buy my football team. 1 1. Low in the dirt ball, wolf two. We're kind of waiting on somebody to buy ours, you know? Yeah, what's going on with that? I I'm hearing Rob Walton, possibly, and if it is, I hear he wants to build a new stadium, so. Really? Yeah, if you That stadium's been there for a long time. Yeah, mile high. Hmm. If he wants to move to Jersey, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Whatsoever. We don't need another Jersey football team. 2-1 no. is laced there at third. Can't make the catch. And will be safe at first. Tough play there for Rob Newmeyer. Ball quite literally popped out of his glove. It did. Yeah, but no, they would never take the Broncos out of Denver. There's too much pride in that yeah. city for that football team. 100%. So Zarallo reaches on the error. We'll call it an E5. And that brings up the nine hitter, Jason Vogt. Playing right field today. I believe Jason was on the football team. The last name does sound familiar to me. Check back over at first, not in time. Yeah, the last name Vote does sound familiar when we did. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I mean, the only thing Vote sounds familiar to me is Steven Vote, catcher in the main. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Delivery from Trujillo. Squares back to Bunt. That one, he pulled away in time, so it'll be ball one. And if he did make contact, that would be a pop-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was real high, that pitch. one -on one vote here in the top of the third. Nick Federico, Rowdy Ryan Roddy here from Roxbury High School. Paul Harvey pressing the buttons and making faces at me. That one's in there for strike one. He left the last inning unscathed, mm -hmm. had a runner at third, but retired this time. Trujillo goes back to first, again, not in time. Got a check on Zerallo there. Zerallo has two stolen bases. And with a nine hitter on, you could see him take off with nobody out. Checks on him one more time, still not in time. Trujillo, since he came in in the second, keeps those runners honest, definitely. He was thrown back when 
Little Vigilo was on second, later took third, and doing the same thing here with a runner on first. Delivery, squares back to bunt, but pulls away in time. Will be two and one. Kind of getting in the pitcher's head here a little bit. Trying to bunt, taking a big lead. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's gonna happen here next with this 2-1 count. Montville is good on the base paths though, Roddy. 67 stolen bases on their year this year. Delivery from Trujillo, squares the bunt again. And that one's gonna be called a strike, so even at two and two. Now with two strikes, we most likely will not see a bunt no. because if it goes foul, that's an out. Correct. It's good when we know the rules, right? Yeah. It's good know. when we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Zeral leading off first. 2-2. Two -two. Swung on. Watch out. Catch it, Paul. <laughs> that one goes foul near us. So we'll do it again. 2-2 two and two still. Paul, you should really bring a mitt. <laughs> I would love to see that. I got one of the, you ever see those like really big mitts? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yup. I asked Paul, we were in Vernon yesterday doing the Vernon Jefferson game. We were wrapping up. I was like, Paul, you should just go run the bases. Why not? He didn't want to. Trujillo checks back at first. Again, not in time. Paul, well, I see you run the bases here after this game. <laughs> <laughs> while, while they're doing senior night? <laughs> nah. That would be something. So Jason Vota, nice at bat here. He's battling against Trujillo with a runner on, nobody out. But Trujillo keeping Zorallo honest at first. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. First out, good strike out there. By Trujillo, one away, and we'll go back to the top of the order. It's Ryan Worley. Wouldn't be surprised if I see a hit and run here. Mm -hmm. Worley grounded one back to the mound and was out at first in the top of the first inning. Pitch from Trujillo. That one's up there for strike one. Still only one out here in this frame. Zorolo still at first, being a little bit of a pest in the side of Trujillo. Going to check back on him every once in a while, at least, at least four or five times so far, I think. As Worley is up in the count 1-0, checks back again, not in time. Trujillo keeping close tabs mm -hmm. over him. Does have that advantage because he is a lefty. So he's got full sight there at first base. Pretty sure if it was the other way around and there was a righty pitcher up, I'm pretty sure Zorallo would, would have taken off already. 1-0 to Worley. Zorallo will take off for second, and he will be in there. So a stolen base there for Zorallo. So there's the run, but no hit, you know. That's right. 50%, fifty percent, but that's yeah. a fail right there. You know, got to be fully right, fully right. So Zerolo steals second with one out, and it is one and one to Worley. One one to Worley, taking off for third is Zerol. That one. Thought it went in the backstop for a second, but a good job by the Roxbury catcher, Mike Pia. But nonetheless, Zorallo takes third. So a runner on third with only one out now. Pia's kept a couple balls in front mm -hmm. of him. A lot of balls in the dirt, fortunately. So 2-1 on Worley. Runner at third. Pitch there is popped up. That might get the run in. And that one is great diving, catching right. And that avoids the run from scoring. Good play there by Matt Rattay there in right field. That's a top 10 or top five worthy play right there. I, I'd have to agree with you there, Rod. That's a good one. Surprised the runner on third didn't wait back there. And could have possibly tagged up. <laughs> Rattay has a nice arm, though, but he wasn't set for a throw. Yeah. 
Good job there by Rattay, keeping this one, keeping that run at third. That brings up Ian Kaiser, the pitcher today, who's done a very good job on the mound for Montville. He's going to try and bring in Zeralo here. First pitch is low, ball one. And if you want anybody to drive in that run, Ian Kaiser is the one to do it. According to my stats here, he's leading the team in RBIs with 15. Amazing when you can do both on at the plate and on the mound. It's Kaiser coming in this one, a sub-1 ERA. 1-0 from Trujillo. Is laced into right field. That's going to be a base hit, an RBI single for Kaiser. Scoring is Rollo. An RBI single for Kaiser, 1-0 in favor of the Mustangs. Looks like he was thinking about two there, but Rite got that one in quickly. So one run scores, still two outs. That brings up Logan Force, number 12, the left fielder, the three hitter today. So that is Kaiser's 16th RBI on the season. Trying to add more are Montville. That one's upstairs, 1-0 one on force. So Montville already scored one in this inning. Trujillo just got one more out to go, and he's good. one -oh. low in the dirt again, ball two. Got to hope that Trio isn't losing that command that he had early on in the second. He's only pitched one in two thirds here, but you got to imagine that pitch count be up a little bit. He's done a lot of pitches to each batter. Checking back at first is Trujillo, not in time. Kaiser makes it back, but ahead in the count is Logan Forrest at two and zero. He struck out in the first against Dawson Garrard. It was his only strikeout of the day. But Trujillo looking to get out of it here and keep it only a one-run game. Checks back at first again. And Kaiser sporting the, uh, the oven mitt. As Kaiser has 12 stolen bases on the year. He can do it all. Yes, he can. 2-0. Kaiser's going to take off for second. That one's good play there. Knocks it down. Going to be a close play at first. Is in time. Good job. Good recovery there by Justin Ford, I believe. And that'll end the inning. So one run on one hit for Monville, but they take the one nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the third. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. I've worked with many mortgage companies over the years, from the big banks where I thought I could get the best, most competitive rate, to the small guys where I thought I'd get more personalized service. And I never thought I could have it both until I met Family First. Family First gave me the most competitive rates in the market with unmatched service. Their team is incredible. They were always at arm's reach, ready to answer my questions, help me weigh different loan options, and work through some of the most challenging closing situations and timelines. I have to say without a doubt, Family First is the best in the business and I strongly recommend them if you're looking to finance or refinance your home. Nine, one, and two to start the bottom of the third inning here for Roxbury. Leading off will be number 12, Robbie Newmeyer playing third base. And then Richter and Capco after that. Kaiser still on the mound. Five strikeouts as that one is in there for strike one on Newmeyer. 
Neumeier Sr., his dream job is a, a career in aerospace engineering. Wow. Got a doctor, aerospace. That one's outside for bowl one. One and one. Got some smart people here at Roxbury. Big aspirations. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I know you wouldn't expect it with me being from Roxbury, right? <laughs> what is it? What do you mean, Roddy? What does that mean? You're you a smart guy. I guess, I guess. What do you mean? You're a good you're a smart guy. President of Roxbury Gale Vision. You're in you're doing it all, man. I think my vice president's tuning in right now. Two one, grounder to third. It'll be a close play at first, but that throw is in time. Back to the top of the order here now. Yes, sir. Be Colin Richter. He struck out in the bottom of the first. Richter, one of those football players I was talking about. You can see him playing split end. Yeah. And Rete was the other who we saw make that nice diving catch. He was the fullback slash halfback. You always like to compare him to Mike Allstott. Remember that? I did? Yeah, you, I, you how did. How do you remember that and I don't? Because I'm a Rock Spray football fan. Oh, that's true. Remember everything. I really compared him to Mike Allstat. Yes, you Where did. Where did I pull Mike Allstat from? I think you really? got that from Sudal, to be honest. Uh, I think you. I think Sudal gave that to me, and then I gave that to you. So yeah, I you're guess. probably right. I think you're right on that one. So to more Sussex Sports, it's not Mac Rite. It's Mike Allstat. <laughs> <laughs> As Richter down 0-2 quickly to Kaiser, the 0-2 outside for. Ball one. And I believe we have a new Roxbury Gale warming up in the pen. It's Robbie Newmeyer. Robbie Newmeyer, yes. That one is laced short, took a weird hop, and he's going to be safe at first. Oh, that's Richter on the base pass. Mm -hmm. That is dangerous. Newmeyer actually closed out that game for uh, Roxbury Morristown, mm -hmm. which you mentioned earlier. That game was long, man. Yeah, that on was. On Mother's Day? Uh-huh, it was. I felt bad for my mom. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> I got to watch the boys play. So we'll call that a single for Richter. As that one is fouled. 0-1. To Capco. Taking off for second, going to be caught there. Nice tag, and he is out at second. Good play there. Good play in the infield by Montville. And Richter caught stealing one away as Capco is still down 0-1. And it all started with that pickoff there. Richter didn't think he could get back, so he went and tried to take second. But great little technical play there by the Mustangs. I like the thought. I like the I like the aggressive nature. Down one nothing in the third. As Cap go down 0-1, the pitch from Kaiser swing and that one's fouled back here again toward the batting cages. It's one and one. Oh no, it's 0-2. What am I saying? What am I saying? Foul balls are strikes. I just had to remind myself of that. 0-2 is drop swing third. and a miss. Drop third strike. So we'll call that a another strikeout for Ian Kaiser. So one hit, no runs there for Roxbury. They're still down one nothing as we head to the fourth inning. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that.
Well, uh, welcome back. And once again, we'd like to thank Country Concrete. would like to say proud sponsor to Roxbury's youth. And this game was sponsored by the Roxbury High School Parents Club. Thanks to all the sponsors that have helped Roxbury baseball team throughout this year. That's a professional ad read right there, if I've ever heard one. Good job, Roddy. Yeah. As, we, as we head to the top of the fourth inning, Lobagillo will lead off for Montville. It'll be four, five, six. It'll be Lobagillo, Force, and Niskins. It'll be the three batters for Montville as they're up one nothing off the RBI single from Ian Kaiser, helping himself out on the mound as they got one run across. But Roxbury's still in this one no matter what. And still in there is Elliot Trujillo for his third, in third inning of work. Let's see if Trujillo can make it through this inning. And if not, I expect head coach Greg Trotter to look over there to third base for, to Robbie Neumeyer, who is just warming up in the pen right beside us. So here's Lovagillo from Trujillo. That one's popped up. Watch out. We're good. Good play there at first. What's the matter? You got a little close for comfort there? No, I wanted to catch it. <laughs> Out made by Joey Ronchetta. Very close play here by our table for out number one. A little disappointed they didn't toss me the ball like <laughs> I was a little kid out of baseball. So Lovagillo pops out to third. That brings up Hunter Force, the center fielder. He flew out to center in the second. And there's a plane flying overhead as I can hear somewhere. There it is. There it is. Delivery from Trujillo. Low in the dirt again for ball one. To Hunter Force. 316, eight ribbies, two homers this year. <laughs> I love the chirp. I do too. It makes this sport great. 1 0 to Force. That oh. one's laced to center, going back as the center fielder, but it's not going to be enough as he makes the catch in center. Good job there by Richter, that's, tracking that one down. That's some serious launch angle on that yep. one. And that is brought to you by StatCast AI. <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. And so I've got that type of technology here at right. Morris Sussex Sports yet. yet. Paul Arvey does the best with technology. He's got the replay. He's the best, man. He's the best. So two quick... Outs for Roxbury in Roxbury's favor, so that brings up number 11, Ryan Neeskins. He popped out to second in the second inning. I feel like Neeskins might have been a football player. Hmm, doesn't sound familiar. Oh, you, oh, for Montville. I thought yeah. you meant like, I don't know where my mind was going. Is that one's upstairs for 1-0? Or maybe I'm just imagining things. You could know, the, be right. The name sounds familiar, though. You could be right. It's 2-0 and oh to Niskins. 2-0. Oh. That one is laced foul on the third base line. Third base coach had to hop out of the way. They'll be down for a strike. So it'll be 2-1. and one. I think the chirping just gets louder and louder every inning. <laughs> Paul's shaking his head. He's like, I don't want to hear that. 2-1 upstairs. 3-1. So nice hitter's count here for Niskins. You think he gets the green light here, Roddy? Yeah. yeah. Swing away. All right. Fed, it's a little later in this game. Can we chirp at each other a little bit? <laughs> hey, Fed, 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 Fed. 3-1. Swing and a miss. Count is full now at three and two. Sometimes I wonder if there are even words coming out of, oh, I don't, out yeah. of the players. Sometimes mouth. I don't understand. I'm just like, this is just noise to me. Just trying to distract the pitcher, you know. <laughs> yeah. Big mental game, baseball is. Full count, three, two. Trujillo trying to battle back. Payoff pitch. Laced out there, and that'll be a base hit to left for Niskins. So a uh, two-out single for him, and that brings up David Bedio. Just past the outreach glove at Nick Morales over there at short. 
And here comes the DH. David Bedio struck out in the second. But another runner on for Montville. <coughs> Pitch from Trujillo is upstairs, 1-0. Sorry, the allergies are kicking in now. Worst possible time to be kicking in allergies. The old one outside, one and one. Niskin's not taking too much of a lead over nope. there first. There are two outs. Doesn't want to really take that risk, and I don't blame him. Trujillo will step off, and going back to first is Niskins. Of course, as Roddy said in the top of the inning, we want to thank everybody here at Roxbury for having us, especially the Parents Club and Booster Clubs for providing us with all the information that we needed and everything to be comfortable here today. We appreciate it as always, and we love coming here to Roxbury. Pitch is laced out there, and that'll be a base hit for Betty O, as he will take off for second. Close play at third. That one gets away, but... Advancing to third is Niskins, and that'll be a double for David Bedio. So that brings up Chris Zerolo, the eight hitter. That was a pretty good throw there by Capco. Right, right down there ready to get the tag in. I think it might be time for a pitching change. Coach Trotter gonna come out to the mound, and we'll see what happens. So Niskins at third. Bedio at second on that double, bringing up Zerolo. So Go ahead, Roddy. So from the looks of it, it's just a mound visit. Calm down, Trujillo, yeah. just a little bit. He's got two outs, but runner in scoring position. Two runners in scoring position. Zerolo reached first on an error, stole second and third, and then scored off the RBI single by Kaiser. So now this brings up Zerolo. Trying to get some more runs on the board and some insurance for Montville. Looks like there'll be a new arm warming up in the Roxbury pen. It's Nick Rizzo. Pitches skied out there to center. It'll be a close play, shallow center. Good job there. And Roxbury does a good job getting out of it as Zerolo goes down easily. on the fly out to center. So no runs on two hits for Montville as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. We'll be right back. Rich Latman, realtor with Keeneland Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space our first time home buyer or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis, excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. Bottom of the fourth, here we go from Roxbury. Justin Ford will lead things off for the Gales. Still in there is Ian Kaiser. He's been, he's been fantastic today. Ford ripped a missile single in the first. Yes, he did. Big swing there. 
Got a little piece of the bat, but nonetheless, it's going to be strike one. So going back to the Roxbury food review thing, Roddy, you just you guys haven't had enough time to do it. I mean, it's a I've been looking out for it, you know. It's been a combination of things. See, like, we only have lunch together on mm -hmm. one day. Gotcha. And if the lunch isn't, like, if it's something we reviewed already or it's something that, you know, it's, like, not, like, really worthy mm -hmm. of review, we don't give it a review. But we actually were going to do one today, but guess what? It happened to be that day that we didn't have lunch. Mm. So we're going to do. You didn't have lunch today? No, no, we didn't have lunch together. Oh, I was gonna yeah, say, me, me and my uh, I was gonna say, Roxbury High School didn't feed you. That's that's not right. No, nah, they, they keep us fed all. Oh, we get we get free low. lunches. Really? Yeah. Ever since the pandemic. Wow. Been, been and that just food. continued throughout. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Today was a chicken cheese quesadilla. How was that? How would you rate it? I forgot our. Uh, no, we're not. I'm not gonna do that at thirty. All yeah. right. I haven't, I haven't seen it in a while, you know. <laughs> I haven't tasted it. I would get out of 10, though. I'd give it, like, a solid, like, 7-2. I think that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. That's pretty good for, that's that's good for school lunch. Yeah. With some Chipotle sauce. Ooh, everyone likes Chipotle. That, that's what make it a 7-2. Without the Chipotle sauce, a 6-7. 2-2. Mm. Two, two. That oh. one's lined to center. That one's going way back. That'll go off the wall. Good piece of hitting there by Fortis. He'll take off for second, and he's in there. And he's hyped up at that one. Hey. As a leadoff double there for Ford. That uh, dance he just did there on second, that's a, that's a little inside joke there for the Roxbury baseball Is team. It? it goes along with this song that goes like, Jersey, do 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 <laughs> Yeah. So that brings up Nick Morales, the cleanup hitter, sh playing shortstop today. He struck out his first time up. But now a runner in scoring position for the first time for Roxbury. And the Gale's looking to tie this one up as it's still only a one nothing game. Kaiser looks to second, the deals. One's upstairs for a strike one. Breeze is picking up a little bit. Ford also plays basketball, but let me tell you, he focuses all his time on baseball. All year round, he's doing something for baseball, and that's why he excels in this sport. Sport of repetition, and he puts it in. 0-1 oh, from Kaiser. Swing and fouled off. The 0-2. Oh, Roddy, where's your Morris Sussex Sports windbreaker, man? Kinda I didn't think it was going to be that chilly. My mom asked me if I wanted it. I was like, no, nah, I'm chilling with the <laughs> polo. I wore this to school, actually. Did you? Know, you? Represented. There you go. Yeah. Had to let everyone know that I'll be on the be on the call. On the airwaves today. Yep. So Morales down 0-2 to Kaiser with a runner on second. That's Justin Ford. He doubled. Big swing and a miss there. That one's fouled away. It'll be strike three. Another K there for Kaiser as one away with one on. Brings up Mike Pia. Let's see if he can drive in Ford there at second. He definitely can, Roddy. Pia. Five RBIs on those four home runs, like you mentioned before. As Newmeyer still warming up in the pen for Roxbury's big first swing and a miss from Pia, down 0-1. Delivery. Kaiser's fourth inning of work. He's been pretty consistent here. Mm -hmm. High velo, good command. That's what you need in a pitcher. 1-1 one, one to Pia. Downstairs again, taking off for third is Ford, and he's there in time. So a stolen base for Justin Ford. Advances that runner in scoring position, and it's a 2-1 count on Pia. Now a sack fly will do it here mm -hmm. with only one away. This is the chance that Roxbury has been looking for through these first three innings. Looking to capitalize here on a pitcher that's been pretty lights out today. Two one, taking off for a second. They're going to place the bunt down. That one will go foul. Going to play a little small ball is Roxbury, but that one will go foul. So result in strike two. It'll be two and two to Pia. What do you think of that, Roddy? Going with the small ball idea. I mean, whatever works, works. Whatever scores that run, scores that, that run. That is true. Be a tie ball game. 
And no matter what, it would, have been, it would have been a close play at home or at first, whatever they decided to do. That play reminded me of a Morris County final game Roxbury had. Not last year. Oh, yeah, last year. 2-2 two, two swing and a miss. That'll be another strikeout for Pia as he strikeouts for the second time today and another K on the chart for Kaiser. So two away with a runner on third. That's Ford. And here comes Matt Rattay. Rattay big swing and a miss there. So fun fact about Ford over there in third, he actually pitched last year for senior night for Roxbury as a sophomore, threw a no-hitter. And actually a run still came into play through errors and walks, but yeah, threw a no-hitter, Roxbury got the wow. win. Seen a couple of those no-hitters this year. Jefferson's uh, Jake Caprera threw one against Newton. Pitched pretty well against Vernon yesterday. As Rattay is down 0-2, big swing and a miss at one high. And three straight strikeouts to end the inning for Kaiser as runners stranded on third for Roxbury. Nothing doing there for the Gales as they go down in the fourth. No hits. I mean, uh, one hit on no runs there for Roxbury as we head to the fifth. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. We'll be right back. We're in for a good ending. Me in this game, we got big plans. Overcoming every challenge. And right now, that means getting by him. It means putting in the time to get faster, to get stronger. One thing is for certain, I will never be outworked. Enough? <laughs> Never. All right. It's literally right around the corner. That's true. Welcome back here to Roxbury High School. Thank you to everybody here at Roxbury High School for having us here on Morris Sussex Sports. Nick Federico and Ryan Roddy, the pride of Roxbury High School, as I like to call them. Uh, I, I, I mean, okay. Uh, you don't I'll, believe I'll, so? I'll, I'll take that distinction. All right. I mean, there's a lot of things to be proud of here. We actually have a new head football coach coming in for Is next that so? season. Yeah. Coach Cosmo LaRusso uh, retiring after oh. spending, I think. He was here for a long time, yeah, yeah, right? over 20 years. Mm. I think 2002 was his first year coaching here. He actually teaches a sports literature class that I'm in that features Justin Ford, Elliot Trujillo, really? and Nick Rizzo. Wow. So, yeah, we get into some pretty heated debates <laughs> there. Today we were talking about Josh Donaldson, Tim Anderson comments. Oh, boy. Yeah. We're not going to get started with that. And now Ford's playing at third as Newmeyer's on the mound. Mm -hmm. Coming into play at second is number 24, Tommy Cimarano, the junior. So some things about Newmeyer here. He's a Mets fan, and his favorite athlete is Jacob DeGrom. That's pretty normal, I'd say. Yeah. Something the Mets can be proud about. There you go. When he's healthy, at yeah, least. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, Mets fans. <laughs> so Vote will lead off the inning. That one skied foul right behind us. The 0-1. Monville holding on to that one nothing lead. Roxbury threatened in the fourth, but nothing doing there. They're trying to hold on to this slim lead they have against the Gales. Newmeyer deals. Low in the dirt, one and one. Newmeyer's most memorable slash favorite memory in Roxbury baseball was last year's Morris County tournament run and the funny moments on bus rides to away games. Nice. Always nice when you can have fun playing the sport, huh? Sure. 1-1 one, one to vote. That one's a line. That'll be get in there, get through for a base hit. Nice little worm burner there. So vote is on with an RBI, oh, with an RBI, with a leadoff single. I'll get my terminology right once in a while. And that brings that back to the top of the order, Ryan Worley. He's 0-2, grounded back to the mound in the first, and then flew out to right. 
as an early runner on against Rob Newmeyer. See if they can roll two. The Roxbury defense. That'd be nice to see. Snap throw back to first, not in time. Trying to catch a vote, sleep in a little bit. Roxbury does not sleep on those runners at no, first. Nope. Always keeping a good eye on them. Newmeyer checks on the runner at first. He'll deal. A little bunt there by Whirly. Play at first will be made. Runner will advance. So the sack bunt gets it done there. Stay out of that double play. So that brings up the two hitter of Ian Kaiser. He had the RBI single that made this a one nothing game, scoring Zerallo. And that's the difference in this one, Roddy. Tightly contested matchup mm -hmm. here. So vote moves to second. And they intentionally walk Kaiser. So now that brings up Logan Force, number 12. Interesting choice there. They're going to maybe try and turn the two. Doesn't hurt to try. Nope. Newmeyer deals. One's in there for strike one. From what I've seen, Newmeyer is very good at locating his pitches. Mm -hmm. Whatever coach wants him to throw or whatever he wants to throw or whatever the catcher wants him to throw, he'll get it there, and he will do it as efficiently as possible. Snap throw back to second. That one's going to go in the outfield. Volt will stay home at second. Runners will stay, and we'll still be 0-1 on Logan Force. That one could have been potentially dangerous, Roddy. Would put a runner at third, mm -hmm. or a runner at second, or both. Or both, yeah. <laughs> oh, one to Force. In there for strike two. Runner at first and second. Kaiser intentionally walked and vote. See if Newmeyer can secure the punch out here with this pitch. Meyer will step off. Need a second to think after all that. <laughs> <laughs> I like my. That was good. That was good. I think you should be in the dugout. I should. If I had never stopped playing baseball, That's I true. probably would have. Well, you were a cross player. Yeah. I didn't find out until later. Yeah. I was. You were a goalie, right? Yeah, eighth grade. I think I might be coming yeah. back next year. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The maybe. return, the Roddy return. Yeah. 0-2 oh, snap throw back to second. They got oh. him at second. Good heads up play by the Gales. That's a big play there, and Vote is out at second. Nice tag by Morales. That's a huge second out. Let's watch that again. That was a nice snap throw to second. The Gales finally get one. Great pickoff move there. Good work by our camera team there. Awesome job, Eric. Love that. Now two away for Forces. He's down 0-2 quickly. This would be big for Roxbury if they can hold him here. That really changes the course of the inning here. Sure. 0-2. Pop. Uh, foul. Watch out, guys. That one's foul, so a little battle here for Force. We've had a couple close calls here over at the table. I'm hoping one lands right into my hand. Would that be considered an out because you go to Roxbury? No, I don't no. think so. <laughs> no. 
Or maybe I'll just like hit it up in the air. Yeah, like <laughs> keep it up, give it to the first baseman. There you go. 0-2 oh, again. Just outside, ball one. These Mustangs have had really good at bats. They've mm -hmm. seen a lot of pitches. They wait for their pitch, and they ripped a couple of hits. Give it up to Roxbury's defense, little Roddy. That, that you could argue, besides the RBI single by Kaiser, that could be one of the most important plays of this game, picking off Bo at second. 1-2, taking off. Play at second, not in time, so call that a stolen base. for Kaiser. We should see a challenge pitch here on one and two. Still a one-two count on force. Now two outs off the nice pickoff move to second. Chuck back at second again, the 1-2. Swing and a miss. Call that a strikeout for Rob Newmeyer And Roxbury able to get out of it. So good inning there by the Gales, but they're still down one as we head to the bottom of the fifth. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on more Sussex Sports. We'll be right back. Sussex Meatpacking and Warriors. New Jersey is a family owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. If you're not getting the most comfort out of your system, check this out. Like the rest of your neighbors, you want your home to be as comfortable and inviting as possible. It's no surprise with the winter storms around here, the demand for system repairs are way up, which means waiting around for a while for a technician to show up and having to be stuck feeling uncomfortable for a long time, which is why at ICS, we make sure to service your home quickly and efficiently so you can get back to feeling warm and comfortable again. So if you don't want to spend your winter freezing your butt off, visit our website. ICSHVAC.com. Welcome back. Once again, thank you to the Roxbury High School Parents Club for having us here today. And Country Concrete would like to say they are proud to sponsor Roxbury's youth. And thank you to all the sponsors that have helped the Roxbury base baseball team throughout this year. And remember, if you want your game broadcasted just like this one, reach out to George Muha at George at MorrisSussexSports.com. Very well said, my friend. Leading off the inning will be Joey Ronchetta for Roxbury. It'll be 7-8-9. Ronchetta, the one that got that walk-off hit mm -hmm. against Morristown. Looking to come up big here as Kaiser has had four shutout innings. A lot of Ks on the scoreboard today for Ian Kaiser. I believe only two hits from Roxbury, right? Mm -hmm. And both of those coming off the bat of Justin Ford. Yep. So, Roxbury limiting the runs, only keeping the Mo Montville Mustangs to one, but they need to get their offense up and going here if they want a chance to come back to this ballgame. Nine Ks for Kaiser through four innings as we're getting ready for the bottom of the fifth. Here we go. Delivery is upstairs 1-0. and One zero to Ronchetta, low again. Two and zero. I think he's gonna take until he sees a strike mm -hmm. here. Kaiser's been good all day. Velocity's been up. It's really the first time we've seen him throw two consecutive ones in the dirt. Two zero. That one's outside. Ball three. Three and zero. The first time. Kaiser's really fallen behind here noticeably today, and it's 3-0 to Ronchetta. And there is some action up there in the Mustangs' pen. Can't see who it is yet. Number 22 up. I'm not quite sure of his name. Pitches in there for strike one. I'll get that for you in a minute. Oh, why, thank you. You're welcome. That would be... 
Joey Rayberg up in the bullpen. That's a football player. I know that for sure. That one's a, yeah. Now I now that I now that I just said it on the air. Now I remember. Joe Rayberg, wide receiver. Ian Kaiser now working at full three and two. Pitch fouled away. That in dumpster. Ronchetta stays alive. Dink. Dink and dunk. Full count. Three two to Ronchetta. That one's low, and Joey works a walk. Lead off walk for the Gales. That brings up Orlando Angulo. Orlando, also a Mets fan. His favorite athlete, however, is Pete Alonzo. He hit a walk-off home run the other night. Another fan favorite, Pete Alonzo, as well as... Jacob DeGrom, who said, actually, said another fellow senior was a fan of the Mets. It actually won't be Orlando however, though. It's number 24 who's playing second base last inning. It's Tommy Cimarano. Mm -hmm. Lay down the bunt on... Cimarano, so that one's going to be down a one. What do you have on Tommy Cimarano there, Roddy? You have anything? Well, he's been he's an infielder. Mm -hmm. He pitches a little bit. And a lot of these guys for Roxbury, mostly the juniors, a couple seniors, like Newmeyer and Morales, they played for this team known as the Red Dogs, oh. who I used to sub for, actually. Really? And uh, now they're known as Iron Area, I believe. Iron Area, yep. So Cimarano hit by pitch there, so now two on. We got ice. Yeah, we're good. We'll have a meeting at the mound. See if he takes the ball from him. So, of course, Ronchetta moving to second. Cimarano at first. We'll see who they bring in for Robbie Newmeyer. Is he's now on the mound, or is he still going to come up the bat? I believe he is. Yeah, I think they, since Angelo. It's no longer the DH. Mm -hmm. I think Newmeyer will still be hitting in that nine-hole spot. So Kaiser going to stay in there as there's two on with nobody out, bringing up Robbie Newmeyer. He grounded out to third his first time up in the bottom of the third inning. So two on for the Gales, nobody out. This is a real opportunity again for Roxbury as they had one in the last inning against Kaiser. Check back to second. And they're going to call a bulk, I believe, on that one. So the runner will advance as Joey Ronchetta, so he'll advance on the bulk. So now runners at the corners for the Gales with nobody out. And Montville had those corners in, those corner infielders. See if they're going to return to their... Regular positions where they usually play. Or if they'll keep the corners in for Newmeyer. Looks like Kaiser going to talk to the umpire on the field. It's a little bit of an explanation, I guess. You know, I really love doing baseball games. It's just like... Nice to sit here with one yeah. of my one of my best buds. Yeah. For about two yeah. hours and just really take it all in. Yeah, nice for a lot of downtime. Day. No sun, which I'm kind of thankful for. You know. No rain, nice which day. Paul's thankful yep, for. No rain, that's right. Rain is staying away. Paul's wearing somewhat of like a Hawaiian shirt, maybe. I think that's all he wears. Yeah, that's uh, that's the, that's the wardrobe for you. Yeah. That's the wardrobe for Paul. That's got to be your thing. Yeah. yeah. I gave him a hard time because, you know, we all have to, we wear our, our Morris Sussex stuff and yeah. we're like, Paul, 
Got to be a team player, bud. Oh, there you go. He's got the windbreaker. Yeah, he's sitting All on right. it. You're not cold? Really? Maybe it's just because I'm small. You're a bigger guy, so, you know. In a good way, in the best of ways. <laughs> Paul's a big lumberjack. <laughs> Great Paul Arvery doing, pressing all the buttons. Got to give credit where credit's due. We're not in the air if Paul's not the spectacular producer that he is. We have a lot of great producers here at Morris Sussex Sports. So now here is Robbie Newmeyer. Pitched in the last inning for Roxbury as that one delivers. That one's low in the dirt. Newmeyer was looking to bunt his way on. So I guess uh, Coach Trotter likes that mm -hmm. small ball approach of bunting in a run. I've seen him do it for years. My brother, a product of his baseball mm -hmm. program. That one's in there for strike one. 0-1 oh to Newmeyer. A oh, 1-1, one one, excuse me. They didn't put the ball up there on the scoreboard. So it is 1-1 one one to Robbie Newmeyer. Thank you. Okay, all right. Yes, our scoreboard is correct. Pick off throw to first, not in time. Trying to get Cimarano napping a little bit, but he stays at first. Also the runner on third is Joey Ronchetta. Golden opportunity for the Gales. One-one to Newmeyer. Squares to bunt. That one's low. It'll be ball two, two and one. Now, if a bunt's not achievable here, there's a huge hole between the mm -hmm. shortstop and the third baseman. You knock one right through there, you might have yourself a run or two, depending on how fast Cimarano trots around those bases. Two one. Throws down the bunt. Play at home is in time. So Cimarron, uh, so Newmeyer will be safe at first on the bunt. But out at home is Joey Ronchetta. Interesting decision there by Ronchetta not to slide. And then moving to second is Tommy Cimarron. Montville head coach and the umpire talking a little bit there at home plate. We're going to get back to baseball as Newmeyer now on first with one away and Cimirano on second. Up comes the top of the order for the Gales. It's Colin Richter. He's one for one. He singled and was caught stealing in the third. Gales have been slowly but surely getting to Kaiser over the last two innings. Gotten some runners on, and it's do or die time here for Roxbury as they're running out of time here in the bottom of the fifth. Kaiser. Richter lifts one to shallow left. Going to be a tough play back there, and that one's going to be foul. So it'll be 0-1. Of course, again, I want to thank everybody here at Roxbury for having us. And if you're interested in our great, great product here at Morris Sussex Sports, reach out to the big boss, George, at morrisussexsports.com. That's George Mooha. And, of course, check out our website, morrisussexsports.com. Great articles over there. Yes, there is. You can find some stats. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can click the bell and subscribe to us on YouTube. Just type in Morris Sussex Sports on YouTube, and you'll find us. Pitches in there for a strike, 0-2 on Richter. Still only one out in this mm -hmm. inning, so. But that run not scoring really kills, kills the vibes over yep. here, you know? Oh, 2 to Richter. Swing and a miss upstairs. Another strikeout for Kaiser. 
And that'll be two away for Roxbury as Matt Capco will come up to the plate. He's 0 for 2. He grounded out to short and struck out in the third. But Capco, a golden opportunity for his team as he has runners at second, first and second with two outs. Need a nice piece of hitting from Capco here. Big swing and a miss there. Runners will advance, though, on the... I'll call that a wild pitch. Why not? Kind of wild. So Newmeyer will move to second. Cimarano will move to third. Now, an even greater opportunity here for Capco. Mm -hmm. And a great opportunity to show his coach, Coach Trotter, like, hey, man, I'm only a sophomore. Next year when I'm a junior, you better be playing me full time. I live in these big situations. True. If he can deliver here for the Gales, maybe get two in here with runners on the second and third. Will be a huge victory for Roxbury as they're 10 and 14, trying to climb their way back up to 500 before the regular season ends. Oh, one to Capco. Way upstairs. Coming home. There's going to be a play at home, and he is in there. And Roxbury has tied this one up on another wild pitch there by Kaiser. So now there's absolutely no doubt Kaiser's kind of losing his stuff here a little bit. Like two wild pitches in a row and scores a run. Kaiser score, uh, Cimarano scores on the wild pitch. We'll see it again. I went way upstairs. Catcher couldn't get it. It was a closer play at home than probably expected, but Cimarano scores on the wild pitch. And it's a 1-1 game. That one is in there for ball two, two and one to Capco. You know, Feds, I feel like we're in these dugouts right now. We can hear them. Yeah, right. Hey, let me get some seeds over there. <laughs> two one to Capco is low for ball three. A nice hitter's count for Matt Capco. Cimarano scores on the wild pitch to tie this one. And Newmeyer waiting at third. Capco upstairs, he works a walk. So good patience at the plate by Roxbury. And here comes trouble. And Justin, you're right, Roddy. Justin Ford, two for two today for Roxbury. Singled in the first, doubled in the fourth, and then stole third. Didn't score. Good opportunity for Ford to go three for three and get in the go-ahead run here, which is Newmeyer at third. Oh. And they're going to intentionally walk. And actually, Justin Ford. That is his seventh intentional walk of the really? year. Really? Yep. So Capco moves to second. Ford to first. And here comes the cleanup hitter, Nick Morales. He's two for two with two strikeouts. So this is why you put your cleanup. This is what this is where you put your cleanup hitter in situations when potential guys get on base. So the base is juice for Roxbury. Pitch to Morales is popped up. Second baseman will get back there and make the play. So they get out of it, but Roxbury ties this one up on the wild pitch and scoring was Cimarano. And we have a tie ball game here from Roxbury. We'll be right back for the sixth inning. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right because CCM is in the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. Semino and Philippone is a New Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt, devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 
203-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf-lawfirm.com. Welcome back to Roxbury here for the top of the sixth inning, a 1-1 ball game as the Gales scored in the bottom of the fifth. And, of course, this game isn't possible without the Roxbury High School Parents Club and Boosters Club. So thank you for hosting us here on Morris Essex Sports. Nick Federico, Ryan Roddy here with you today. And, of course, County Concrete would like to say that they are a proud sponsor of Roxbury Youth. And thanks to all the sponsors that have helped the Roxbury baseball team throughout the entirety of the season. So, Roddy... Your Roxbury Gales score in the fit in the bottom of the fifth there. Tie ball game against a very good pitcher. Finally get to him. We got a good one. Yeah. Now we just gotta make sure that we keep our pitching mm -hmm. top notch. Can't have any hiccups here. Mm -hmm. Really close game. New Meyer let up a base hit to vote in the last inning. So now leading off for the Mustangs is Brian Lovagillo. That one is skied to center. Good play there. One pitch, one out. Is that Lovagillo? I don't think so, Roddy. You caught me. You caught me sleeping. I was there. about to say. You caught me sleeping there, buddy. I believe that was. Let me. Let's correct that real quick. That is the number twenty-three of Tyler Polachek. So now here's Hunter Force. That one's in there for strike one. I really want to get one of these foul balls, so when I throw it back, I can show you guys my <laughs> my uh, my high heat. There you go. I'll, throw you, I'll get another one, throw a split finger, get another one, throw my circle change. You, you get the memo here. Foul Ooh. just skips the fence. So that's going to be 0-2 real quick. Kid on his phone almost got woken up by that. <laughs> Literally like a hair off of... Hitting him, uh, he's good now. Oh, he's now he's gonna start watching this game for there sure. There you go. Oh, two to force fouled away again. We'll do it one more time. Oh, that that was a good one to get. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, I'm not joking. I'm gonna get one of these foul balls. O2 oh, to force in the dirt. One and two. If you're a Yankees fan, uh, news coming out. Uh oh. DJ LeMayhew scratched from tonight's lineup with left wrist discomfort. That one is laced to center. That's going to get down for a base hit for Hunter Force. So a single for him, so one on and one out for Ryan Neeskins, the first baseman. He's one for two. Uh -oh. Paul thinks he feels uh -oh. rain. Paul, it's okay. Everything's going to be just fine. It's okay. I don't feel anything. <laughs> His heart is pounding. As Neeskins comes up to the plate with one runner on, that is Hunter Forrest, who's singled. Don't worry, Paul. Rain never hurt anybody but Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> Neeskin's looking at first. Throws back to first. That one just in time. That was a little close there. A little close for comfort there. Pitch to Neeskins is in there for strike one. Newmeyer's pitched pretty well since coming in the fifth. Oh, one. That one's laced to right center, but catching it there is the right fielder. That is Matt Rattay. That'll be out number two. For David Bedio.
Betio one for two with a strikeout and a double. Two out here. Let's see if mm -hmm. Newmeyer can have another quality inning getting out of this inning. Newmeyer sets, throws. Low. Ball one. One one game here in the top of the six. Nick Federico Ryan Roddy here with you from Suckasana, New Jersey, on the campus of Roxbury High School. Throw back to first. Close play, and he got him at first. Good pickoff play. The second straight pickoff play by Roxbury. And a great job there as that ends the inning. No runs on one hit for Montville as we head to the bottom of the sixth. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball and Morris Sussex Sports. We're in for a good finish, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our season pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Hi, I'm Rob Guswaller. As the branch manager of our Persephone location for North Point Bank, I can tell you emphatically that our customers continue to sing our praises. Our community values us as much as we at North Point value our team. Our goal is to always exceed our clients' expectations. If you're just zipping through life and need a helping hand with any of your home buying decisions, please give us a call today. Welcome back to Roxbury. Of course, I want to thank everybody here at Roxbury High School here as we enter the bottom of the sixth inning. County Concrete would love to say that they're a proud to sponsor Roxbury Youth. And this game is sponsored by Roxbury High School Parents Club and the Booster Club, so we thank everybody at Roxbury for having us here this afternoon. And thanks to all the sponsors that have helped Roxbury Baseball, the baseball team, throughout the whole year. So new pitcher in for Montville is the number 22 of Joey Rayburg. And the numbers on Rayburg will get to you in a second. We know you can catch a, a ball, but can you throw one? Joey Rayburg's numbers on the season, nine and a third innings pitched, a 5-2-5 ERA and 10 strikeouts. So not much action for Joey Rayburg, the junior. But he's getting some action against Roxbury. As leading off for the Gales here in the bottom of the sixth will be the catcher, Mike Pia. Matt Rattay, Rata, who's made a couple great plays in right field today. And then Joey Ronchetta will be the first three up for the Gales. So, like I said, Mike P up at the plate. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. As he'll lead off the bottom of the six for Roxbury as they scored on the wild pitch. Cimarano scored from third. And we got some bullpen action going on for Roxbury. Nick Rizzo up. Yep, Nick Rizzo. As that one's in there for strike one on Pia. Oh, one from Rayburg. Upstairs. One and one. Nick Rizzo, one of our seniors, Roxbury celebrating today. 1-1 one, one to Pia. Check swing, but it's not going to be anyway. It's going to be strike two. 1-2 and two to Pia. Nick Rizzo also attending East Stroudsburg University nice. for right. athletic training. Cool. My old college roommate and best friend from school, from high school, athletic trainer. Shout out Joe Bruno. His fiance Morgan's her. Birthday today. Happy birthday, Morgan. I know you're not watching, but I'm going to say that anyway. Ball's in the dirt. Ball two, two and two. Well, that's a real easy birthday present there. What's you get, that? You get your a name shout out. out on more Sussex yeah. Sports. You better, there you, go. you better clip that one and uh, wrap it up and yep. put a bow tie on top. Cause there you go. And it's free for the most part. It is actually free. 
There you go. Free to watch here at Morrison yeah. Sports. Strike three, so first strike out of the day for Rayburg as Pia goes down for his third strike out of the day, and that brings up my, Matt Rattay. The six-hole hitter. Rattay also 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, but has made very nice couple plays in right field today, saving some runs. Rattay's due for a nice rip here. Sure. Delivery from Rayburg in there, a little off speed, 0-1. I said Rayburg only less than 10 innings of work as this one delivers. That one's wild to the backstop. It'll be 1 1. You're right, Roddy. Matt Rattay is due. Hitting 333 coming into this game. Two ribbies. Average is good, but you want, you know, want to drive in some more runs, I'm sure. Definitely. Only a sophomore, Rattay. Started last year as a freshman on yep. the squad. He's got a bright next two years for Roxbury. He's the 1-1 one, one uh -oh. is popped up. I got We're good. It. It's going to stay in, and that one's going to almost hit the dugout. That Who's one's it? foul. It's going to be one and two. I talked about senior night last year for Roxbury. Two seniors playing Division One baseball for mm. Roxbury doing great right now is uh, Notre Dame pitcher Jack Finley really? and Northeastern first baseman Justin Boslin. Wow. He was actually just posted on NCAA Baseball because he was dressed like Woody from Toy Story. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Always a great day to represent. Sets and fires. Off speed in there for strike three. Another strikeout for Joey Rayberg. So two down. Here's Joey Ronchetta. The Joey battle. He's worked two walks today and was out at the plate in the bottom of the fifth when Roxbury tried to rally. A little controversial, according to the Montville head coach. Talk to the umpire a little bit about that mm -hmm. one. First pitch to Ronchetta is for a ball, 1-0. Ronchetta playing first base today for Roxbury. The 1-0. In there. Dove a little bit at the end. That's in there for a strike. One and one. Joe versus Joe here. Ronchetta versus Rayberg. The Joey R's, huh? Rayberg deals. That one just misses. Ball two, two and one. So when they're chanting, come on, Joe. I wonder who they're cheering for because there's two Joes. One at the plate and one on the mound. Can't be biased at all if no. I say, come on, Joe. 2-1 <laughs> from Rayburg. It's a big swing and a dropped strike there. Goes off the hand of the catcher. Is he going to need a second? I believe he is. So, anyway, it's 2-2. Two and two. And I believe that is a new catcher in there for Montville. That is Tyler Palachik, as Lovagillo's day is done. We saw there in the top of the sixth. So it'll take some time there to attend to the catcher. And, of course, we'd like to thank, as always, Roxbury for having us here. We love covering the Gales anytime that we can. County Concrete would love to say that they're a proud to sponsor Roxbury's Youth, as always. And this game is sponsored by the Roxbury High School Parents Club and Boosters Club. And thank you to all the sponsors that have helped Roxbury Baseball, th the team, throughout the years, throughout the whole year. And the years, I guess, Yeah, too. sure, why not? 2-2. Two -two. Fouled back again to the batting cage. We'll do it again, 2-2. Two and two. On Chad, two walks, so he's done a good job getting on base today. But held without a hit so far. As Rayberg is working here as he struck out his first two batters he faced. Trying to make it a 1-2-3 inning and get his offense back at the plate. 2-2. Two -two. 
That one's popped up. That's going to be close to us here. And that one's going to get down foul. You know, I was thinking about asking him if he wanted to say anything to more <laughs> Sussex sports, but you have no idea what could have came out of his mouth there, so yeah, it's a good thing know. I didn't. Nice diving effort right in front of us by Ryan Neeskins, who again, who pitched last uh, yesterday in Montville's winning against high point. But still 2-2 two and two here as we're in the bottom of the sixth. 1-1 one, one game after Roxbury tied it in the bottom of the fifth on the wild pitch. 2-2 two, two, upstairs. Full count, three and two on Joey Ronchetta. Three walks, one day. It's possible. Payoff. Fouled again. Good job battling by Joey Ronchetta. Car, car, car. Nope, nope. just going to be short. Tire. Everyone's car is safe. Don't worry. Hit a tire. A rim. If it's just a tire or a rim, you'll take that over a windshield. Yeah, we'll take that. Justin Ford of Roxbury actually shattered his uh, teammate's mom's Oof, windshield. That's tough. I believe it was a home run at Seton Hall. Three to another Prep. foul. Three straight fouled off pitches there by Ronchetta. Good job battling. We'll do it again. Three, two. Three, two, fouled off again. Four straight fouled off pitches behind us. Will it hit a grill? It will not. So close. You said grill. I, said, I think I said grill too. Yeah. Who knows what Paul said? <laughs> Paul's just making sure it doesn't rain. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we're getting some serious cloud coverage here, but I think we're going to be okay. Ronchetta puts that one to. Left center, that one's going to get down for a base hit. Ronchetta is going to stay at first. So he's paid, uh, his battling pays off as it's an RBI. It's a single for Joey Ronchetta with two outs, and that brings up Tommy Cimarino. Great at bat there for Ronchetta. Really made the pitcher work. Now let's see if Tommy Cimarino can do anything here with two outs. Tommy this year, three for nine, hitting 333 with two ribbies this year. Pitch there is upstairs, 1 0. Oh. 1 0 to Cimarano. No one's in there for strike one, one and one. And Yankee fans, I hate to say it, oh, but no. I think the injury bug has officially hit no, the team. A roll this Chapman, 15 day injury list oh, with Achilles. Achilles tendonitis. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Chad Green, Tommy uh, John, LeMay, you left unreal. wrist discomfort. Other guys got COVID problems. Well, uh, here's the upside Aaron Judge is still hitting home runs at a great feat. 1 1. And Swing and a miss there from Cimarano, one and two. Here's the downside. His camp is asking for so much money, and uh, they're not going to talk to him until the offseason hits, season. and he's going to hear it from all teams. So we don't know what's the future over here for the Bronx Bombers. Hopefully everybody wants Judge back. Yeah, everyone. If you don't, I don't know what you're talking about. If you don't, you're a Mets fan. One, two. In there for strike three. Good job by Rayberg battling back after giving up the single to Ronchetta. But all the outs come via the strikeout. No runs on one hit for Roxbury as we head to the top of the seventh inning. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball here on Morris Sussex Sports from Roxbury. We'll be right back for the seventh. Have you ever needed a day to relax during these stressful times? Well, then look no further than modern acupuncture. Modern acupuncture will ensure your time there will not only be relaxing, but make you feel rejuvenated. Not only will your stay be comfortable, but safe as well. All staff at Modern Acupuncture practice safe social distancing guidelines and keep all equipment and room sanitized after each visit. Modern Acupuncture, making lives better.
Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right, because CCM is in the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. The seventh inning is brought to you by the Roxbury High School Parents Club and Booster Club. Thank you guys for having us here. County Concrete would like to say they are proud to sponsor Roxbury's youth, and thanks to all the sponsors that have helped the Roxbury baseball team throughout the year and through the years, as Roddy said, or I said before. You mistakenly said. I did. I purposely said. There you go. Top of the seventh, David Bedio, Chris Zurallo, and Jason Vogt. Seven eight nine. Seven eight nine. That one is blooped to short. One pitch, one out. Caught there by Nick Morales, mm -hmm. whose dream job is a hedge fund manager. Really? You don't yeah. hear that too often. That's an interesting one. Hedge fund manager? I don't know what you're saying, Paul, because you don't have a microphone. Can we let Paul talk for a oh, little bit? He, so he could be rich. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Yeah. Money isn't everything, though, folks. Money is not everything. Yes, I know I'm right, Paul. Here's Chris Zerallo. That one's inside, ball one. Zerallo reached on an error in the top of the third and then flew out to center in the fourth. Pitches in there for strike one, one and one from Rob Newmeyer. Feds, is this your dream job? Yeah. I never thought in a million years I would ever get paid to be a broadcaster yeah, in any capacity. Pay to do what you love. Exactly. Man. Took my That one's fouled away. Ooh, close here. Took my two favorite things, talking and sports. That's right. Put them together. Put them together. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I want to either be a ni real nice broadcaster. Yeah. Maybe, Roddy, a, you're maybe gonna an do, analyst. You're going to do great things, my friend. I can tell. Or maybe I'm like a crazy good chef. You don't know. You, I mean, from what you, from the pictures you showed me, the stuff that you've made, I wouldn't doubt it. One, two from Newmeyer. That one's tipped in the gloves. So that'll be strike three. The ultimate goal, Feds, is to build a sports bar and grill right here in Roxbury. Really? Yeah. They, yeah, they really don't have one around here. No, we we used to have one called Legends. I over. went there once. It wasn't bad. It wasn't. It was yeah, bad. I don't know. I don't know how it doesn't. How it didn't stay around. But. Yeah, I don't know. Really. I've been there once too, and I was like, oh, this, this I is this was good. nice environment. Yeah. You know? Had like four big TVs. Well, you got a lot going on over here. You know, you got the whole Ledgewood area over there. Yeah, now. that's new. Yeah. yeah real new. It's real nice over there. They got Starbucks. I might go over, go over and get some coffee maybe. I'm a sucker for Starbucks. Rod, you, uh, do you drink coffee? I do drink coffee. Are you a Dunkin' guy or Starbucks guy? Whatever is closest uh, right. where I am, yeah. See, I'm a little picky. I like a I like a darker roast coffee. Paul, what about you? You don't drink coffee, do you? You don't? Oh. I need to have almond milk. I need to have I need to have oh, almond geez. milk in my coffee. Paul wants to see the world burn by <laughs> how he's describing how he likes his coffee. Yeah, Paul Paul likes the uh, he doesn't actually like water in his coffee. He just likes coffee grounds and eats them with a spoon. Yeah. Not even a spoon of cause, fork. Cause Paul's still drinking the Folgers in your cup. He's not using a Keurig anymore. <laughs> Paul's a caveman, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like Rob Newmeyer is going to be taken out of this game and coming in for the Gales will be the number 15 of Nick Rizzo, the senior. His favorite sports team, the New York Yankees. Yeah, all right. Retweet. Cool. And his favorite athlete, this was my favorite one because this I've known this guy for years, Nestor Cortez Jr. Oh, nice. Well, what a great story. Yeah. yeah I hear that he's still rides the subways to games just walks around i mean if you think about it roddy it it's really like the i know it's like the whole being recognized thing yeah. is kind of a problem but like why wouldn't you ride the subway i know it's could? most convenient if there was like public transportation in roxbury you would take it instead of drive well i mean you're you're kind of a new driver so I, you'd probably want to yeah, drive. I don't have my license yet oh that's right that's yeah right. but you're, you're almost there is my point yeah you're With that there. being said, uh, Feds, you mind teaching me how to parallel park? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. Yeah. I had to learn from my test, and that was it. Well, in this area, you don't have to. You don't have. You don't have to know how to parallel yeah, park. Yeah, unless you unless you go to somewhere like 
Like a Dover, I get. Nah, Dover, uh, Morristown. Mm-hmm. Morristown, probably. Morristown more so. Yeah, Morristown more so. So Nick Rizzo going to take his warm-up pitches here. I'll read the ad again because why not thank the Roxbury High School Parents Club and Booster Club for having us here today. Love covering the Gales. Anytime we can come here to Roxbury High School, we really do appreciate it. County Concrete would also like to say they're proud to sponsor Roxbury's youth. And, of course, this game is sponsored by the Roxbury High School Parents Club. And thanks to all the sponsors that have helped the Roxbury baseball team throughout the year as Nick Rizzo is taking his warm-up pitches. So it doesn't answer my question, Paul. You just like coffee at, like, at home? Like you'd just prefer coffee at home? Any coffee. Paul's a big McDonald's coffee guy, I think. Yeah, yeah. Starbucks is kind of bougie, too. Kind of overpriced. Will you be getting coffee at the diner, Paul? <laughs> yeah. Call, yeah, Paul will definitely be getting coffee at the diner. So Rizzo will step in on the mound, and he will face Jason Vogt. Excuse me, that's not Vogt, but the play at first will be in time to end the inning. So a nice clean inning for Roxbury in the bottom of the se- the top of the seventh, and they got a chance to win it. Here in the bottom half of the inning. No hits, no runs. Gale's coming up the bat in the bottom of the seventh. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Essex Sports. Chairman's Elite Club Loan Officer Mitch Vandalinda of Loan Depot is your go-to person for home loans, whether it's a new home mortgage or refinance of your current home. And she specializes in renovations for those who want to add on and fix up. Because of her extensive knowledge of loan programs, problem-solving skills, and steadfast commitment to customer service, Midge ensures that each borrower receives superior guidance as they pursue one of the most personal investments of their lifetime. Reach out to her today at 973-202-0992 or mvandalinda at loandepot.com. Sussex Sports broadcast your game? Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports award winning service that brings you play by play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com. 9-1-2 for Roxbury. As we begin the bottom of the seventh, it'll be Newmeyer, Richter, and Capco. Roxbury a chance here against Joey Rayberg. Tied this one up later in the game. They tied it up in the bottom of the fifth, so an opportunity for the Gales to walk it off here at home as another new pitcher in for the Roxbury Gales in the bullpen. As it's a 1-0-2 Newmeyer. one upstairs, 2-0. So, Feds, I hear you're a little bit on a extra inning streak. Are you hoping that to continue here today? Sure. I'm in for some good baseball either way. In for some good ball. So that's Tommy Cimarano up in the bullpen for Roxbury. He's got kind of like a sidearm motion. Yeah. That is 3-0 to Rob Newmeyer. Was pitching, no longer pitching now with... Rizzo up on the hill for Roxbury is 3-0. Is in there for strike one. Newmeyer thought he was taken off for first, but be the first strike on the number 12 for Roxbury. That's another thing Paul can work on, getting us like a strike zone where you can see like where it hit the Automatic strike zone. Automatic strike zone, that'd yeah. be cool. I think we'd give Blue a couple uh, <laughs> a couple, couple, couple critic challenges. Yeah, There we go. Newmeyer works walk. the walk anyway. Great start to the inning for the Roxbury Gales. That's what you want. Yep. See a couple pitches. Get on base. And no outs. Back up to the top of the order here is the number two of Colin Richter. He is one for three with two strikeouts and a single. 
caught stealing in the bottom of the third. This is the matchup you want, Roddy, lefty on righty. Exactly. Puts the bunt down. I think Richter was a little upset after striking out his last at bat, so expect him to take that emotion and use it in this at bat. Mm -hmm. Paul's over here catching bugs with his hand. It's like a ninja. Gonna turn into coffee later. Oh, <laughs> uh. one from Rayberg. That one's line to right field. It's gonna get down for a base hit. Runner will advance. So a single for Richter. And Roxbury's got some ducks on the pond. Newmeyer goes to second. Richter to first on the single. And up comes Matt Capco. Last three or last three innings or so, they've really gotten to Montville pitching, got some runners on. Just about executing now, Roddy, pushing him across the plate. One of the best things they did in this game was knocking Ian Kaiser out of the game. Very true. He was he was dealing. Capco squares the bunt. They'll play it like that. Going to be a close play at first, and he is out at first, but the runners do advance. Capco does his job. Want to hear my best Bob Shepard impression? Please do. Now batting for the Gales, the third baseman, number eight, Justin Ford, number eight. That was very good. Thanks. That was very good. I've always wanted to do that. Oh, they're going to intentionally walk him again. Yep. His eighth of the year. Another walk to Ford. So he moves to first. <laughs> so, uh, so that brings up Nick Morales. Mavo a little scared of Ford? Or? Maybe, maybe so. He was two for two before they started walking him. Ford's got to select words for that decision. Mm-hmm. Base is loaded. Only one out. This is the opportunity Roxbury needs. Morales pops one up. Foul. Be 0 and 1. Hit a bus. Hit a bus. Nope. Nope. Well, not hit a bus. Be short of the bus compound here at Roxbury. So Morales, an opportunity to walk it off for Roxbury and push across that winning run. That is represented by the number 12 of Rob Newmeyer at third. Well, Morales' favorite moment here playing ball for Roxbury. The squeeze double steal during last Oh, one, and he was hitting the Roxbury Gales win it. As Newmeyer goes home and Rock, oh. What happened, Did anybody catch that? Uh, can we get an instant replay on that ball? Unfortunately, we cannot. We but, uh, can't. Sorry, I, I didn't even see that. I was reading this. I'm thing. pretty sure Morales was hit by the pitch. But I guess not. Okay. Uh, that was a little oddity there. So it's still 0-1 on Morales. I would really like to see that after the game and see what happens because if somehow Montville gets out of it, Morales outside, ball 1-1-1. One, one, and one. That's very interesting, Roddy. I'm pretty sure, like, I'm not seeing things, right? Like that. I, I was reading this. I didn't even notice. That's. Huh. How can I be? Yeah. That was close. Now I don't even want to read this. I'll try to read it real quick. <laughs> so his favorite moment playing Roxbury balls was squeeze double steal during last year's MCT versus Mount Olive. Morris County Tournament. Mm. So Newmeyer still at third. At second is Richter. At first is Capco. Morales trying to play hero as Roxbury tied it up in the fifth as that one's in the dirt. Ball two, two and one. Three, three and one, three excuse and one. me. One more ball and a little uh, walk, walk off. Mm -hmm. A Don't walk in, walk off. Walk squared, walk there off. There you go. Delivery from Rayburg. That and one is low, and now the Roxbury Gales have walked off the Montville Mustangs. 
Newmeyer scores from third, and Roxbury defeats Montville for a final score of 2-1. to one. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some post-game thoughts. Don't go anywhere. You're watching New Jersey High School Baseball on Morris Sussex Sports. 713-5944. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's gonna help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis, and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast it's worth the wait. At Madison Tire and Auto Repair LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. We offer a variety of products and automotive services to enhance your vehicle's performance. Our mission is simple. We never promise more than we can deliver, and we always give the customer more than they expect. Because at Madison Tire and Auto Repair LLC, our philosophy is the customer is number one. Please call us for a quarter service question at 973-377-1915. Starting a 
us off at number five, here's Mendham's Liam Lloyd with the snipe past Morristown goalie Dylan Peck for his 10th goal of the year. Daniel Leonard with great defense to steal the puck back, moving behind the goal to pass it back into the middle to Ryan Leonard with a first-time shot to make it 3-1 for Bernard's first whippening. Coming in at number three is Par Regional's Dylan Zelinskis on a great individual effort, creating a breakaway opportunity for the goal as Par Regional breaks through for their first win of the season. First town with the pressure on all of the Mendham players to give Harry Stetton an incredible breakaway to fake out the goalie, letting them know who the boss is to score the fourth goal for Morristown. Finally at number one, it's Pope John star Alana Robinson with the crossover against Sparta's Bryn McCurry and finishes with the smooth jumper. Let's take a look at that again, but in slow motion. The wrap-up reports top five plays of the week are brought to you by Planet Networks provides award-winning high-speed fiber internet, telecommunications, and managed technology services, keeping essential information, technology systems, and connections updated, safe, and secure 24-7 require specialized expertise and support. Planet Networks delivers as a trusted partner, enabling you. Hey, everybody. Back here with Roxbury baseball player Robbie Newmeyer. Robbie, you just won here on Cedar Night. How are you feeling about that? Really, really, really amazing about this. I... We have a great group of guys, a great group of seniors, and we really couldn't be happier with the outcome of this game. Yeah, you know, a little odd play to end the game there. Yeah. People think that Nick Morales got hit, but do you think he got hit? I mean, he walked in anyway. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Uh, <laughs> win's a win, uh, really, regardless. And, I mean, hey, he eventually got on, so, oh well. You pitched very well here in this outing. How are you feeling about that? Uh, feeling stellar about it. Um... Last game I had, I wasn't too hot. Uh, this game, I threw way, way better, and uh, we walked away with a win because of it. And now Montville had beaten you twice previously, if I'm not mistaken. How are you feeling after getting them just one more time before heading into this state tournament? Feeling just great about it. They play some really good ball over there, and I'm really glad for the last time that we can, uh, we can send them home with a win for us. Here from Roxbury High School Baseball Field, I'm Ryan Roddy, joined by Robbie Newmeyer. We'll catch you. Take it, Feds. Thank you. Thanks for that, Roddy. That was awesome. Well, that'll do it for us from Roxbury. From our executive producer and big boss, George Muha, associate producer, Caitlin Langan, the wonderful and flawless producing of the great Paul Arvery. Good job, as always, buddy. And a great job by Eric Kingston on camera. And, of course, great job today by my partner, the pride of the Roxbury Gales, Ryan Rowdy. Roddy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nick Federico, and thank you all so much for tuning in tonight here on Morris Sussex Sports. Your final score from Roxbury, the Roxbury Gales 2. They improved to 11-14 and 14 on the season, and Montville Mustangs 1. Now go make a difference and go put a dent in the universe from all of us here at Morris Sussex Sports. Good night, and we'll see you when we see you. Bounce and go off the wall. Good play in center, and it looks like Lovagilla will head into second slide in, so it'll be a leadoff double. Oh, I'm pretty sure Zarallo would, would have taken off already. 1-0 to Worley. Zarallo will take off for second, and he will be in there, so a stolen base there for Zarallo. He's going to pull one on Worley. Runner at third. Pitch there is popped up. That might get the run in. That one is great diving, catching right, and that avoids the run from scoring. Good play. Taking off for second, gonna be caught there. Nice tag, and he is out at second. Good play there, good play in the hit of course. That oh. one's laced to center, going back as the center fielder, but it's not gonna be enough as he makes the catch in center. Good job there by Richter. 2-2, two, two. that oh. one's lined to center. That one's going way back, that'll go off the wall. Good piece of hitting there by Fortis. He'll take off for second and he's in there. And he's hyped up at that. Yeah, eighth grade, I think it might be coming back next year. Oh yeah? Yeah. The return, the Roddy return. Yeah. Oh, 2 snap throw back to second. They got oh. him at second! Good heads up play by the Gales. That's a... 0-1 oh, to Capco. 
way upstairs. Coming home, there's gonna be a play at home, and he is in there, and Roxbury has tied this one up on another wild pitch there by Kaiser. Throw back to first. Close play, and he got him at first. Good pickoff play, the second straight pickoff play by Roxbury. The mound, and he will face Jason Vogt. Excuse me, that's not Vogt, but the play at first will be in time to end the inning, so a nice clean inning.